whistle while we work. America, nice. On this episode of ADHD Whiskey, we review Old Ezra, barrel strength, seven year, from Lux Road Distillery. If you don't want to mess with that, then you don't want to mess with this. I blew a .06 before I did that. America. <laughs> click, 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 clack. Ooh, that smells nice. It smells like a nice toasted bread. A toasted, a toasted rye bread. Nice. It's a good, a little bit of nuts, a little bit of nut action. This old Ezra seven year Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is charcoal mellowed. It is from the Lux Road Distillery, as you can read on the old label. On the old label. It is a 750 milliliter bottle. It smells like nice, nice, crispy, half-burnt toast with butter on it, but not a lot of butter, a little bit of butter. It's a toast that you might not want to give to your kid because your kid would be like, that's too burnt. But you enjoy it as a dad because sometimes miserable stuff makes you happy as a father. And burnt toast is just one of those things, first thing in the morning. That starts this day off miserable. That smells, that smells nice, burnt toast. Rye spice, pepper, cinnamon, nuts, but like a, like a nice honey roasted almond, like an almond with sugar on it. It's a nice toasty barrel charred nose on here. It's barrel strength, 117 proof. Word, word on the internets, word on the world wide webs is that this is sourced from Heaven Hill. But it has a much more Charry, charry, char, char, nosy, nose, nose on it. Let's go in for a taste. Oh, spicy shelled peanuts. No, unshelled. When I taste it, I pictured a peanut in its shell still. Spicy, caramel, caramel, baking spices. Sweet though, like, like a sweet, a sweet uh, honey. Honey and peanuts. Government warning according to the Surgeon General, blah, blah, blah. Don't drive a car, don't drink when pregnant. Don't drink if you are a <laughs> Just saying. Distilled in ancient Kentucky, Paul Fox or Distiller. There's not a lot of, not a lot of information on this bottle. Not a lot of things that are sticking out as far as like a story or a shmori. None of that. Ooh, now that I said shmori, I'm getting a little bit of marshmallow. Toasted marshmallow, slightly burnt. Cooked on a stick. A green, a green stick that you shouldn't have pulled off the tree because it's illegal. And you shaped it into a pointy, pokey point with your pocket knife because that's the only thing that your pocket knife is ever good for. This is my third bottle of this. The first bottle of this I had was Fan Friggin Tastico. Lights out. Kind of reminds me of this. This is really good. But the first one I had I felt was, was amazing. The second bottle I bought in Colorado when I was on vacation and it tasted like pure corn, like barrel proof mellow corn, like not something I was happy about and not something that you should like why? I was like, what the mother is going on here? The first bottle was way better. And then I bought a second bottle and it was way not better. And then I bought a third bottle and it's better again. Their batches are inconsistent. 
like my bowel movements. Cinnamon, cinnamon sugar, pecan, unshelled peanut, salted, like a, like a baked pumpkin seed, a baked pumpkin seed, write that one down, never heard that one before, have you? Not in a thousand years, there's no story on the bottle, but there's a story in my head, Ezra Brooks was a knockoff brand of Jack Daniels back in the 50s. In the 1950s, there was a shortage of Jack Daniels, and uh, a gentleman by the name of Blibbity Blibbity, because I don't remember his name, started uh, this, this whiskey line, and he named it Ezra Brooks, because he thought it sounded cool. Ezra Brooks wasn't even a real person. But he basically copied the Jack Daniels label and mimicked it, so that, and he sourced his he sourced his whiskey from other places, and he didn't distill it himself. He just sourced it and bottled it, and then people bought that because it looked like Jack Daniels. When there was a Jack Daniels shortage, he got sued, he lost, and uh, as the story goes, there's still Ezra Brooks today and it still kind of looks like Jack Daniels but not as much as it did in the past. I am full of information, I am full of carbohydrates, and I am full of shit. I have no idea if half of that was true. I'm pretty sure some of it was. <laughs> that is good. For a $40 bottle, pick it up. Pick up old Ezra 7 year. It is a great barrel strength bourbon to have on your shelf. If you can find one, pick it up. Don't overpay for it. Just pay, pay the 40, pay the 45, pay the 48. Don't pay the 55. Don't go up that high. Let them know you mean business. Let them know that you're not gonna be a schlub and buy whatever you, they want you to buy at, whatever prices they want you to buy them at. You are in control, you're the man, you're the shit, you're the boss, you're the babe, you're the sexiest son of a mother on this planet. And this planet is, what was I saying? I wish I remembered. Too not sober for this. We like the cork, we like the label, we like the drinky, we like the smelly, we like the blibbity on the thing here. We like the wood, we like the wood stopper. We like the bottom glass logo. We like the way it sounds when you hit it on your head. Concussed. Like, comment, subscribe, they say. My name is Matt. This is ADHD Whiskey. This is a barrel proof son of a bitch. See you next time on another more sober episode of ADHD Whiskey where we talk about things that aren't boobs. Possibly. That is so good. That makes